geometric sequences. All right, so today's lesson is about sequences again. Today we're going to be talking about geometric sequences. Your state standard is listed and your success criteria. To be successful, you need to be able to determine whether a sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Write and graph the terms of a geometric sequence. Write geometric sequences as functions. All right, so as you remember, in the last uh, lesson, we talked about arithmetic sequences. And arithmetic sequences, you had to have a common difference. So you had to be able to add to get to the next term. Well, geometric is similar, except you have a common ratio. That means you're going to be multiplying to get to the next term. So in a geometric sequence, the ratio between each pair of consecutive terms is the same. Your common ratio, when the ratio between each pair of consecutive terms in a geometric sequence is the same, this ratio is called your common ratio. So key things to remember, arithmetic sequence, you add to get to the next term. Geometric, you multiply to get to the next term. So arithmetic will have a common difference. Geometric will have a common ratio. If it's neither of these, then you would choose neither. Example one, identifying geometric sequences. Determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Explain your reasoning. All right, so if we look at A, we have 120, 60, 30, 15. So 60 is half of 120, 30 is half of 60, 15 is half of 30. Again, remember with sequences, you're always looking for a pattern. So I can say 120 times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. So since those are all the same, that means we have a common ratio, and my common ratio would be 1 half. So my common ratio is 1 half. And since it does have a common ratio, that means this one is geometric. So remember, we multiply to get to the next term by the same number that is a common ratio that is geometric. If we add to get to the next term or subtract, that would be arithmetic. So let's write geometric. So that one again is geometric because you multiply by one half your, and that is your common ratio to get to the next term. If you wanted to find the next term, you would just do 15 times one half and then seven and a half times one half and so on. All right, let's look at B part. So we have two, six, 11, 17. All right, so let's check our common ratio. So we're gonna say six divided by two, that's three. And then we have 11 divided by six. That is not three, that would be what? That would be one and five sixths. And then we have 17 over 11. And that would be one and then six over 11 left. So there is no common ratio. So that means it's not geometric. So let's see if there is a common difference. So it's not geometric. So the common difference, if we go from two to six, um, we add four. And then from six to 11, we add five. And then from 11 to 17, we add six. So there is a pattern there but it's not a common difference. It's not the same number being added each time. So it's not arithmetic either. So this one is not gonna be geometric and it's not gonna be arithmetic. So this sequence is neither arithmetic or geometric. All right, so to check to see if it's geometric, you're always gonna take a term and divide it by the previous term. Take this term, divide it by the previous term, and take this term, divide it by the previous term. If those all come out to be the same, like it did right here, 
okay, then it would be geometric. Also, you just see from one term to the next, add four, add five, add six. If that is the same difference, it would be arithmetic. So I just kind of restated the same thing again, but just to make sure you know how to check whether it's geometric or arithmetic. Example two, extending geometric sequences. Write the next three terms of each geometric sequence. All right, a lot of students like this because you're just looking for the pattern and then you're extending that pattern. So you go three, six, 12, 24. You can see that each time this one is doubled. That means you're multiplying by two. Three times two is six. Six times two is 12. 12 times two is 24. 24 times two is 48. So your next term would be 48. And then 48 times two would be 96. And then it says the next three terms. So I need one more, 96 times two. If I think of 100 times two, that's 200. This one is four from 100. So that means eight from 200. So 192. I'm just trying to do some mental math here. It's good to practice some mental math without always trying just to use your calculator. All right, so write the next three terms of each geometric sequence. So this tells you that it's a geometric sequence, which means you're looking for that common ratio. So you, your common ratio was two in this case. You multiplied each term by two to get to the next term. And remember, if we did want to graph this, this would be the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So we could write one through seven, put those numbers of the sequence beside of that. That would be our ordered pairs, and then you could graph those as ordered pairs. So easy to graph as well. We will be doing that in a few minutes. B part, we have 64, negative 16, 4, and negative 1. So we can do negative 16 divided by 64, 4 divided by negative 16, and negative 1 divided by 4. That's going to give us our common ratio. So to me, it looks like it's going to be 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth. So let's do negative 16 divided by 64, 4 divided by negative 16, and negative one divided by four. So that one's obvious. That's negative one fourth. Four over 16, that reduces to one fourth. So that's negative one fourth. And then negative 16 divided by 64, that one is also negative one fourth. All right, so if this is not automatic, you can always pull this up on your calculator and do these divisions. It's always a term divided by the previous term. So once we see this, we know we have a common ratio of negative one-fourth. All right, so we find the common ratio, and we're still looking for the next three terms. So we're looking for the next three terms of this sequence. So we're going to do negative one times negative one-fourth. So that's going to be positive one-fourth. I don't know where the best place to put that is. I'll just put it down here. All right, and you can see that the terms are alternating in signs. So it's positive, negative, positive, negative. This one's positive. So we know the next one's going to be negative because you're going to have negative one-fourth times one-fourth. So negative one-fourth times one-fourth is negative one-sixteenth. And that's taken my one-fourth times my negative one-fourth. And that gives me the negative 1 over 16. And then I'm going to take negative 1 16th and multiply that by negative 1 4th. So two negatives again make that a positive for the next one. And 16 times 4 is going to be 64. So that's 1 over 64. Okay, if you want to double check that. Okay, doesn't hurt to check your math. So let's say a negative 1 divided by 
16 and then we're going to multiply that by negative one fourth and then it's going to give us a decimal but what we can do is write that as a fraction go to math number one is fraction and see if that equals one over 64 and it does so all we did was double check my mental math here okay so for b part write the next three terms it would be 64 negative 16 for negative 1 1 fourth negative 1 16 and then 1 over 64 that would be your next three terms example three graphing a geometric sequence graph the geometric sequence 32 16 8 4 2 what do you notice all right so remember all we have to do is look at our terms so our first term is 32 our second term is 16 our third term is 8 our fourth term is 4 and our fifth term is 2 so what we can do is write these as ordered pairs so this will be our term and this is our sequence so it's going to be 1 32 so if we go over to 1 and go up to 32, our next point is 2 and 16, and then we've got 3 and 8. And we've got 4 and 4, so that's going to be um, 8, so this will be 4. And then 5 and 2. So you can see how this kind of curves. Remember the arithmetic sequence made a straight line. A geometric sequence is going to make an exponential curve. So study tip, the points on any geometric sequence with a positive common ratio lie on an exponential curve. So if we were to sketch a curve here, this would be an exponential curve. So it would fall just like that. And you can see that the number in the sequence n we put on the horizontal axis and the sequence a sub n went on the vertical axis and again you can make the scale depending on what the sequence is